Question one. <clears throat> Which of the following is the graph of y squared equals f of x? This is multiple choice. So you want to think about what is the most efficient path through this question. And I don't necessarily have to go ahead and solve everything and work out all the intercepts. In fact, you don't need to do any of that. Because when you have a look, if you substitute y squared for f of x, you can see right from this first line, right? Clearly, that's a circle. Clearly, that's a circle. If I'm not recognizing that, that's not extension 2. That's not extension 1. The equation of a circle is a two-unit concept, okay? So take note, right? That should have been an immediate recognition. This must be a circle. Question 2. Uh, not going to say too much about working out the eccentricity. If you swap them around, I always say to any students I teach, how do you remember? Is it e squared minus 1 or 1 minus e squared? What kind of shape is this going to be if you have a look at its eccentricity? What kind of value have you got there? What's the size of it? What's the size of it? It's going to be larger than 1, right? Like, I mean, you could get a calculator out to verify that if you like. So that will tell you it's a hyperbola, and then you go ahead and use the right form. Okay? Uh, question three, that was, a, that, was, that was kind of a free mark there. Question four, uh, this is the way that I went about it. I was using the factor theorem, so I substituted it in, and then I tested a couple of values, right? There are probably more efficient paths through it, but that would have gotten you there, so that's fine. You could have just tried out all the values and then solved that would also work. Okay, question five. Let's dwell on this one for a little more time, okay? Because this just as equally comes up in short response, uh, let alone in multiple choice. When you see the absolute value, the modulus of z minus one equals one, okay? You must understand what modulus is and think distance. Distance equals a constant. It's a radius. This is a circle, okay? This is extension two, obviously. But again, that same recognition, it helps you actually think about what does this thing look like? Once you have a picture, it's relatively trivial, okay? And I did actually, I mean, I know we're not marking it, but I did look to see for anyone who submitted any working for their multiple choice, did they draw a diagram of any kind? And there was an almost one-to-one -one relationship between people who drew a diagram and got it right. The rest of them is kind of inconsistent. You can see the distance I'm after is from that point up there, I, there we go, right up there. And you can see it's, I actually want a different color. You can see the furthest location is going to be on the opposite corner, right over here. I could talk about the circle geometry properties that I need, but I don't have to because it's a multiple choice question, okay? That interval there has two parts to it. I'm gonna highlight this. This part and this part here, okay? So I've worked them out one at a time and I've gotten my distance root two plus one. Question six, no need to dwell. Uh, when you square a function, you can see how it behaves with its stationary points and so on, and you can count them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Happy times, okay? Now, question seven. There's the answer. Let me dwell on this for a moment because I may now, I need a pen here, okay? A lot of people would have looked at this and said, what on earth? Okay, I've never seen anything like that before. But kind of the point of the extension to graphs topic is to be able to say, okay, something that you've never ever encountered and memorized a form for, how are you going to work with it? Okay, so I'm just going to mute this for a second so I can draw it. This is what you start with, okay? Now, hopefully you should be able to recognize this is a parabola and it's been shifted down. So I'm going to call this x squared minus c. I have no idea what c is, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Now, when I then take that basic fact and think about all of these other options here, okay, it's easy to eliminate some of them. Really easy. Okay. I think the first easy ones to eliminate are A and B. A, which says, which one is it? It's that one. Square root over the whole thing. And B, which has the square root in the middle, doesn't it? Yes? Okay. Tell me why these two are so easy to eliminate as possible answers. Any suggestions? Hmm. Yeah, right on. The square root would only have a positive side, it won't have a negative, it won't have negative values. Okay, so you look at part A, it has a range restriction on it immediately. You don't need to know anything about it to say why it can only take on positive values and zero, which disqualifies it from the graph that you're looking at right now because it obviously doesn't obey that, right? Right? It has a restriction. Okay, so yeah, it's the other way around, right? Here, x has to be greater than or equal to zero. And you don't need to think about it anymore. 
interesting point, uh, if this repeated a short response and I asked people to graph this, even if I gave you this, this is kind of interesting. Because if you say, okay, y equals uh, the square root of this, right? x squared minus c. Is that, no, sorry, other way around. I'm doing part a. I want the square root of the square root of x squared minus c. That's what I'm after. Okay. Um, no, wait. No, I keep getting it wrong. It's the square root of x all squared. Finally. Okay. Now, think about this. Tell me what shape that is. Tell me what shape. This is a straight line. <coughs> okay. But it's not just any straight line. It's certainly not this straight line. Right? What's the difference? You just told me the difference. It has a domain restriction. So this, this weird guy is actually this. Right? And a filled circle. Right there. Okay, that's an interesting question. Didn't get to ask it, okay? But again, something I can clearly exclude, okay? What's that last one? Uh, this one here. That's D, I think. D? Okay. What is that thing? I, I'm not really used to it in this form, okay? I would probably rearrange this a little bit and maybe swap this guy and this guy. Would, would that be happy, happy with that? So I'd go this equals this. Yeah? What's that guy? That's a rectangular hyperbola, okay? Now that's not bad, but it's certainly not what I've got, okay? So just have a look at this now. Let's come back. Okay. Let me demonstrate. Here we go. So here's our x squared minus c, okay? Uh, there we can verify. You remember, we did, I didn't even talk about the shape, right? But do you remember what I knew about the square root of f of x? It has a range restriction. So sure enough, that's what it looks like, okay? If you have a look at this guy, there's that straight line I was telling you about, right? And it's got its domain restriction, okay? Here's our hyperbola. Shares some important features with the parabola, okay? But it's not what I want. What happens when I apply this absolute value in here? There's that circle there in the middle, okay? And it is a circle. How do you know it's a circle? In case you actually did get asked this in extended response. Do you want to draw it? You want to know? How do you think about this? Let's go back. I need some, um, I need some paper. So let me make a new page. Okay, here's what we're looking at, right? Uh, y squared equals the absolute value of x squared minus c is what I'm suggesting, right? Don't anything about it. What does an absolute value mean? Like it's a shortcut, it's shorthand, it's an abbreviation. It's for either you can think about the square root type of thing, but in my case, I really want to think about the plus minus. There's two parts to this, right? So sometimes, sometimes y squared is x squared minus c. When? When is it? When is the absolute value of a equal to a? For what values of a? When a is positive, right? Or equal to zero, you guys know that zero doesn't matter, okay? So for me, what that means is when x squared minus c is positive, that's that same parabola, that means it's on the outsides, right? So the square root of c, uh, sorry, x is less than or equal to the square root of negative c, or x is greater than the square root of c. So I'm on the outsides, right? And that showed you that hyperbola we got before because that was exactly what we said for part D. That was that answer. Do you remember? What's the other answer? What else could y squared be equal to? Yeah, it's, it's the negative case, right? C minus x squared. Where is it equal to that? In what, in what domain? Not the outsides, but the insides, right? Because it's when x squared minus c is less than or equal to zero, the inside part of the parabola. And of course, when you just rearrange, ta-da, there's your circle. Make sense? Okay. So the reason why I'm going through this detail is not because of this particular question. It's just one mark, obviously. But this would be a great question. What a shame I can't put it in your AP4 exam anymore. Let's turn over the page. Okay, question eight. Um, won't dwell on that one too much. You really did need to know to get that in the right form. Make the right-hand side equal one. You can see my working there. Crunch out your A and your B values and go ahead and you can work out what the equations of the directrices are. All right, let's look quickly at nine. This question was poorly done. Again, like I said, complex numbers, we just kind of leave it alone, don't we? Okay, think about what it means to multiply complex numbers. That's my left-hand diagram right there. 
and think about what it means when you concatenate them, when you just add them or subtract them together, right? Think about your vector geometry. That's how this works best. And you can see my diagrams. You can see I'm understanding how multiplication gives me the rotation. Okay, u equals zw, that could work. Um, and in the same way, how I think about the vectors and the way they relate. Yeah, it looks justifiably like I could get down to the real axis, right? So that's, that's how I've logicked it out. And both of these statements are geometrically plausible. That's all I need, right? And um, question 10, again, that was a free mark, okay?